Hey everyone, I'm Brianna from Boom and welcome to Boom Chat. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Shobo and George Cambarais, the dynamic duo bringing you Buckhead number one. Taba and his mother, a renowned scientist, have just immigrated to the US. But instead of living in the big city like Taba always dreamed, they've moved to a sleepy little town in the Pacific Northwest called Buckhead. In the middle of the picturesque and pedestrian town, Taba discovers that things aren't as perfect as they seem. He and his newfound friends start playing a strange video game that looks like a perfect replica of ancient Benin and its people. Soon, Taba is on the run from the frightening men in black, trying to solve the mystery of his new hometown and to save his friends before it's too late. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, this first story is so phenomenal. This issue is like, oh my God. Okay, so Taba is this character that like we can just instantly relate to. The story has like all of your favorite eerie small town feels and it's got, it's like just laced perfectly with African mythology. Like I cannot wait for more. I want to know, Shobo, first from you, what excited you most about working on this project? Hey, so uh, first of all, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, I suppose like the, 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 what, what, what I was really drawn to was uh, the opportunity to inject some of that African mythology into, uh, into the idea of an immigrant story. Because when you leave, when you leave your home country and you come to America or, or you know, wherever, you, wherever you're moving to, you're leaving a part of you behind. Um, and uh, and I, I was really, really looking forward to connecting with that. Uh, I wanted to be able to bring some of, that, some of those stories that, uh, that I'd read, that, I'd, that my grandmother had talked to me about when I was a kid. Um, and uh, and see how I could how I could bring them to life in a genre that I love, which is that small town mystery, right? Um, and uh, and I just had such a good time writing Buckhead. It was a ton of fun, uh, and and working with everyone at Boom and collaborating with George on it has been just just a dream, really. Honestly, it has been a dream. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, I will make sure that all of the editors and the team knows all of that. We love that. Um, George, what what excited you most about this project? Uh, yes, uh, I love the fact that I'm exposed to a completely new culture to me. Uh, in the process of drawing this book, I, I, uh, I, I need to study the Nigerian mythology, uh, traditional uh, clothing, uh, architecture, Nigerian architecture. Uh, it's, it, all of this is uh, completely new to me and uh, exciting and beautiful. Uh, I, I love it. <laughs> I love getting to learn new things. It's so great. Um, all right. So Shobo, one of the key terms used to describe this story is Afrofuturism. And it's this cultural aesthetic that's featured so predominantly in the first issue, and it's just so beautifully used. What does Afrofuturism mean to you? And why was it so important to use it in this story? So Afrofuturism, uh, what it means to me is basically being able to, to look at those strong cultural beliefs uh, and, and cultural traditions um, that our parents and our grandparents in Africa have, have, have talked to us about and told us about and imparted in us uh, and, and see how we can move forward, see how Africans can exist in the future, how we can apply those to, to today. Um, and, and it was really important to me to write this from the point of view of, of a kid, because, because I think that when you're a kid, um, a lot of the, a lot of those African traditions, they kind of bounce off you, you know, um, mm -hmm. and you don't realize how important they are until you're older. And I think that's, that's kind of a natural process. Uh, so, so that when you, when you move from, say from Africa to the UK or to the US, you are cut off from that and you suddenly realize that you feel adrift. And, and being able to identify, being able to identify the importance of, of those cultural stories, it gives you an anchor, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and that was why it was really important to me. It felt really important to me to write Buckhead because it was admitting to myself how important 
these things were to me. Uh, and, and I hope that kind of come, I hope that comes across in the book too. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I can't wait for everybody to dig into it and like see all of those things that are so special to you and to other people. And so like, th this is what I love about stories. Like everybody just gets to share part of themselves and you learn something new and it's just beautiful. So thank you for sharing. Um, and I'm going to move on to George's question because I don't have a good segue, I'm sorry. Um, George, okay. My uh, question for you is first a statement. Uh, your artwork is amazing. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, it's got this really great unique texture to it. There's shadings and there's patterns and it just reminds you of classic comics. Um, what inspired your style for this story? Uh, first, thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, I'm glad you like what I do. Um, uh, I like to uh, add uh, new things and uh, bring new elements to my work from time to time. Uh, so when I started uh, working on Backhead, uh, I was playing with uh, new brushes uh, and um, uh, I, I really liked the result. It uh, reminds me of the Silver Age uh, era of comic books, uh, where uh, science was uh, a key element to the stories. So uh, in Buckhead, also science is a big part of uh, the story. And I thought it seemed fitted. It seems fitting to the story and the style of Buckhead. And, uh, I kept that. Uh... It works so well. Thank you so much. Like it just, it's so cool. And I can't wait to see how like the, re like it just, I don't know. It's got this like fun, like futuristic element, but it also looks classic. And I don't know how you did it, but you did it so well. Um, all right. So show so much. Oh, you're so welcome. I just, I love having creators come in and then just getting to like gush all over them. Cause you guys just do such amazing work. Like this is, this is fun for me. Um, all right. So Shobo, uh, I know you've done a lot of research on mythology, religious concepts, the history of the Yoruba people. So I can only imagine that using that knowledge for this project was super, super important for you and super exciting. Can you please share with us like some of the research that went into uh, the inspirations for what went into building this story? Yeah, uh, that, was, that was a really, really cool and interesting uh, period for me, just being able to dive into that uh, and having an excuse to do that really. Um, uh, and, I would say that the hardest thing was actually trying to trying to narrow things down and keep things focused because uh, when you uncover so so much cool material, you want to include everything, right? Um, yeah. And uh, and this is exploring. This is you know the, the, one of the location that features in the comic is 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 an ancient city called Benin, and um, and really, it's a city that was famed for its culture and for its sophistication, uh, for, for the amazing layout and the craftsmanship, uh, particularly, particularly the craftsmanship. Uh, the city was sacked in the late 1800s though by the British and, uh, and it was pretty much burnt to the ground. Uh, and, and so it's kind of been lost to time. And, uh, and I wanted to, I wanted to bring, be able to bring it back to life and I wanted to be able to talk about the pantheon of Yoruba gods, and maybe even explore a little deeper than uh, than what you would typically see. Because usually, when you see when you hear about Yoruba gods, you you hear about gods like um, like Shango, who's the god of thunder and lightning. You hear about uh, Ogu, the god of steel. You hear about Oya, who is the uh, the a river goddess. Um, and I wanted to I wanted to feature an antagonist who was um, who was not quite as popular, but uh, but I thought was absolutely fascinating, and that was Iwan, who is um, who is an ancient malevol malevolent spirit of of binding, um, and and kind of who is who's seen as a spirit who holds people back and who traps them, uh, and that idea of 
of a kid who's who's moved to a new country and is feeling adrift and alone, um, and and who is who 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 like that physical manifestation of being trapped was really an interesting idea to me. Um, so I just had a ton of time doing a bunch of research and putting together documents and sharing them with George and then and seeing what George came up with. Uh, it was just it was a wonderful collaborative process and and I think that's you know. Uh, I think that's borne out on the page uh, when you start to see when you start to see Taba enter the video game world and explore Benin uh, and fight against Iwan and and make friends uh, and and I really really love the contrast of that Pacific Northwest uh, and sort of this uh, and then ancient Benin as well. Shabo, you just you just led me perfectly into my question for George. Thank you so much for that. So George Taba and his new friends find this video game that's a perfect replica of the old Edo kingdom in ancient Benin. And I'm already excited for us to see more of it. So not only did you have to create designs for each character in the series, but you also had to illustrate what this world looks like in a way that is true to the culture. So what was some of the research that you went into in order to recreate artistic elements of this ancient empire? So uh, actually, uh, Sobo was in charge of that. Uh, he provided me with all the necessary material, uh, images, articles. Uh, he sent me links uh, and uh, really helped me to create this world and uh, made, it, made it look as um, accurate as possible. Uh, because uh, I know how important it is for Sobo to tell this story right, and I wanted to to tell this right too. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, I I didn't do anything actually. I just uh, read the uh, Sobos emails. <laughs> oh, but I love the collaboration that went went in with the two of you, like working like super super closely together and like it shows because everything is just seamless and it's beautiful and th this is just awesome and i'm glad you guys got the opportunity to work together because you've made something beautiful and i cannot wait for other people to pick it up and hold it in their hands and read it and they're all gonna love it i, I can't wait all right so shobo uh that ending okay can we talk about that because i have so many questions and you can't really answer them. We don't want to give too much away. Like, we want people to pick it up. But between this strange human behavior, these mysterious tattoos, and then we've got, like, these men in black, um, what are some of the challenges that Taba might be facing next as he gets closer to figuring out what's really going on? Yeah, so uh, really, I think I think the biggest challenge Talbot faces is the realization again that he feels like he's alone, um, and uh, and 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 all those other challenges that appear, the, the men in black, uh, a few other things that happen that I won't talk about. Uh, they all just kind of cut him off from his new friends, and they cut him off from from his mom, uh, and they cut him off from everything he knows. And so being able to being able to reforge to, to forge new friendships, uh, to establish himself and to feel comfortable in his new environment. Like that's really, I think, the biggest hurdle. Uh, because like dangerous things are coming and he's not gonna be able to handle it alone, you know? I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what he does and what his journey's like. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right, Shabo, George. Thank you so much for your time today. It has been so wonderful chatting with the both of you. And for those of you watching at home, be sure to pick up Buckhead number one in stores now. If you want to stay up to date on all of our amazing content, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that notification button.